take away from people that they were given. That's theirs. It's ours. And you take it away, not saying the BLM did it, but the Russian then shame on them. Because if you can't, that's the time to go.
it says, one of the reasons we're redoing the RP is because we want predictability for industry. Yeah. And so, you know, that's one of the And that's that false message. It's like, are we open for business? But it's not a false message. I mean, whatever comes out of this is going to be a decision. Here's the predictability, given everything else that we've been asked to do, here's the predictability of our, you know, our timber harvest and our timber supply. And industry base your, your, um, you know, your projections on that. And then, you know, then you better get it. Sorry, I'm working at my last one. It was $122 million for fire suppression, $75 million in with a net cost of 75 million and a timber yeah. loss estimate of 370 million dollar timber loss in 2013. Yeah. Is that the Douglas State. complex or no? That's the entirety of Oregon Department of Forest Reform in 2013. So you're telling me that they couldn't they couldn't find these funds preemptively, but post tense after the fire has destroyed everything, that makes a lot more sense. Right? Well. Um, you know, part of the um, the Oregon Department of Forestry fire budget for 2013 in the Douglas Complex was from insurance. So, you know, their insurance paid off big time there um, in terms of covering the costs. So it's not like money that came from another department. Um, and, you know, you're still going to have that some level of fire protection. Regardless, of I get it's not perfect. So, I get it. so in another comment, so the, the Taylor Grizzly Act of 1934 stated that these lands would be relinquished back to the states. It still hasn't happened. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, know. that's way above. This is, this is going to be way above your pay grade. But I mean, it's, there's so many instances where actually it shows that the federal land that is controlled by government isn't supposed to be controlled by the federal government whatsoever. It's a complete well, constitutional again, those violation are, those are on certainly, two constitutions. Those are things certainly things. legal issues that have different avenues than an RMP. So then maybe we should just get people together and file for a cease and desist on the BLM until sure. they can actually prove the fact that they have a title to win. Sure. Sure. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, that's why we set up the judicial system is to take those disputes through that. You know, and speaking of the judicial, I know that you get faced with this a lot with environmentalists, but one of the big problems I've got is carbon footprint on fires or trees that fall from down that are not managed and the loss of wildlife on these catastrophic fires. I mean, tens of thousands of animals are lost and you never hear a stitch about it in the media. I would love to have stats, you know, how many bear, how many cougar, how many, all the animals that are lost from catastrophic wildfires that either lose their habitat, run, deer, a bit, because that's not being publicized very much. No, but at the same time, when, you're, when you've got a new forest, you're going to have a different kind of habitat for a different suite of species that weren't there before. So, you know, there's, there's always winners and losers in a fire. Uh, but certainly there's, there's some mortality. Uh, John, the, the Endangered Species Act, that, they obviously, at this point in Congress, has trumped the ONC Land Act of 1937. It's a mockery, don't you think? I mean, I know you can't. You're stuck. I know you're stuck because you're just, you're not maker of the law, you're just enforcer of the law. Whatever interpretation the courts come up with is what the BLM would put in the courts. You know, what I think is really irrelevant. I mean, I'm just here to carry out, you know, what's in current RMP and what will be in the new RMP. I mean, that's my marching order. So, you know, my, my decision space is really... I know, I know. Because I lean on the experts. I lean on the foresters. I lean on the, the boots on the ground that really know uh, that, that are good in predictions. 50 years, 100 years, they see forest, they know timber, they know the lifespan of this timber. You know, why would you purposely lock up a, if a timber span, you know, between 75 to 85 years old and there's stands and stands of it out there and they're at the maximum capacity, why would you let that stand there and become obsolete, die, disease, fall over? Yeah. I, I, you know, I understand a little bit of the habitat. 120 million wild animals have been provided and 4 billion pounds of toxins have polluted our air and water due to 
uh, wildlife on federal control lands. What, Ten years alone. What what site is that? That's the research I did for a resolution to support uh, to return federal lands. Yeah. So I, you Can know, I ask you a question? Yeah. Because you Talk seem to like this you, man. Well, no, I wanted to ask you because you seem like you know a lot. Um, how long does the tree live? I'm just curious. Different species. I was say a fir tree, because isn't that the one that and is see, mostly And see, the pond, this, these group right here on the forestry side of things mm -hmm. are the ones, but I mean... Uh, what about, a, what, say, uh, a, a fir tree, which is cut mostly well, out in the Illinois Valley? I don't know exactly, so I'd be afraid to comment, but you have... Do you have any idea? Well, ponderosa pine, doug fir, right? What, what's, the, uh, what's the lifespan of it? It all depends on where you are. Uh -huh. If you're in the so county, I've seen 200-year-old trees that are that. Right, big. right. And I've seen 50-year-old trees that are this big. Right. So, you know, there's there's Doug Fur that... Uh, but can't they live, like, really a long, long, well, long time? it depends on where they are. Yeah. If you're in a coastal rainforest, you might have a 400-year-old tree there, a 500-year-old tree. Uh -huh. On the Applegate, a tree lives 150 years on a rock, it's going to fall over. That's old. Yeah, that's don't don't they use the range per inch as a measurement to know when they plateau? Yes. They slow down the growth. Was it 10, 10 rings per inch? Well, you know, that's under ideal conditions because you could have a young tree that's in a very thick stand and it's going to slow down growth well before the mean annual increment. So there's there's other factors to that. Huh? There are other factors. What other factors are there? Well, site condition, competition. No, I, I, I just heard you, you know, under about ideal conditions, right. though, they can determine when the tree, when the tree growth plateaus. But that's just the bottom of that hillside where it's like a little more water, a little more sun, right. deeper soil. Mm -hmm. That tree is going to live a lot longer than a, a tree 100 feet away from it growing on the side of the hill, maybe the sunny side of the ridge where it's getting cooked by the sun. I think in general, you, get, you know, trees between two and three hundred years old are, they're not rare, but you're not going to find, you know, many trees over two hundred. Here. Maybe for but they can here. live that long. Right, but for argument's sake, on harvesting. Well, and I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm talking curious. a fir, uh, right. I think most of the pine are, you know, again, you know, the ones that, that I've drilled and determined age on, yeah, you know, you're getting that, that 200 some years. It's, you know, yeah. it's, it's an old looking tree. Yeah. Portion of but there are. Is a difference. So if you go out and you're driving down the roads out of Falls, you can see just rows and rows and rows of all these little trees stacked on top of them. All they're going to do is suck the water from each other. They're not going to get thinned out. They're going to create a water loss for other words because they're still trying to grow. Right. They're still trying to get to that larger capacity. Two hundred year old tree is gonna be that big. Exactly. Right. Because they're stacked right. in and on top of each other. And uh, out in Oak Creek, Big Falls areas, out towards you know the general winter I usually go hunting or hiking. It's all over. The, the roads are just lined with numerous amounts of small growth trees that are normally growing here, but they're just all over the side of the road because that's where they get the best sunlight. Uh -huh. And they enjoy the water they're just as you they pack get, them in like that, uh -huh. so you, you create a, a fire issue also, because those little ones, the fires are going to come low and suck all those needles out all right. the time. So, when you're asking old trees, anything over 100 years old doesn't live in the same environment we have now, because we've stopped fire from going through there, we've added people to it, we've, we've allowed biomass to build up to a level that those trees will never be the size now that they were then. And the only way to do that is either step back and let everything burn three or four times to get rid of it and start over, or manage it. And Can we break I away? I want to follow up on something that Craig said about the, the biscuit fire. That created a sterile situation. The biscuit fire, oh wow, okay? yeah. 500,000 acres, you can't replant in that situation, okay? What did we learn? What did we learn from the biscuit fire? And, and, and they didn't allow, like Craig said, couldn't go in and harvest that timber when it was harvested. We got salvage timber. Yeah. There, there, there was some salvage that occurred there. Um, there is, and I don't remember the percentages, but there was some low severity burn. I don't remember the percentage of high severity burn. What did we learn from the biscuit fire? That's what I want to know. So, well, fire there should have been a lot of us. Oh, no, come on, I mean, come on. You didn't know that before the biscuit fire? We have different species, like in the Illinois Valley, we have a lilac. Well, 
What did we learn? I mean, what did we learn? What do you think we learned? When a fire I mean, comes through on live oak, it's we lost a lot of timber. Well, sure. Okay. Well, I'll put what about management of the undergrowth, the biomass? I mean, why can't we get ahead of it proactively instead of waiting for these millions of dollars to come in to pay for the fire suppression? We can't afford to send planes in the sky anymore. So. What's going to happen this summer? I'll put that. I'll ask the question. Nothing. No. Well, that's another thing. Yeah, I, you know, I think the one thing you can't, you can't, you can't manage to put out. You can't thin your way to a solution. Really? There you go, Craig. There's your answer. I just don't think there's. We have the capacity. More and more do we want do you, you know, do you want every acre of when land you say to we, look? Who are you referring to? BLM? Well, BLM's force the, the industry okay. in its, in, in overall, you can't yeah. in your way to a solution. Yeah. Well, all right, you throw enough money at it, sure, you can. I mean, you could, you could probably employ a million people, and you could fit everyone, and then, then you would have... Well, uh, they're the biggest probably a very controlled would, environment. But you, you have to keep after that and maintain it forever. We just don't have that capacity. You know, we don't have, and nor do we necessarily want to do that on every No, I understand. You want to got certain, I mean, if you look at this list, uh, oh my gosh, they've got it broke out. Late successional reserve, riparian reserve, other reserves, then you, an east side management area, then you get to the harvest land base. So out of 2.4 million acres, you got 556,000 acres that are harvest land base. Yeah, you know, that's on the that's on the one alternative B. So I, I don't know. Um, have you? Uh, are you? I mean, you know, first of all, some level of fire is appropriate in the forest. And, you know, there are certain lands where those values, uh, you know, like in the wilderness. It's a natural element, I get that. Exactly, and that's what a lot of uh, the Abyssin fire was, it burned in the wilderness. So, you know, the value there is not growing timber. Yeah. So that's part of it. What about salvaging the burnt timber? Okay, the fire happened. What about going in and salvaging it? See, that was well, I haven't even asked. I haven't even asked that yet on the salvage piece. Yeah. Is there should be a mandatory task force to go in and and get that. You know, it's like a rescue mission. Go in, get that, and replant. I mean, I mean it's it's not like we don't know those lands. The BLM, they're experts at it. The foresters, they're experts at it. They can lay that map out. They know exactly what they're dealing with. And it's like, okay, let's go in, let's deal with it. And I don't care if you're tagging tree one at a time. Let's pull that out and replant. I mean, but it doesn't seem urgent enough. That's the thing. And I just wonder, that's why I asked um, Shane earlier, was do we, does BLM have the tools they need to do those kind of things? Is the intensity there to take care of the people that are in their jurisdiction? Well, the communities, the, the you know, industry, the tourism. Yeah. You know, after, after all is said and done with all the rules and laws, you know, that's what our, our particular land base is that we can operate on. And that's what we make an effort to operate on. So, are we making the effort? Yes. Are we always have all the tools you need to do it? That's my, and Shane's not said yes or no. He didn't, he didn't want to answer me when I asked him to have everything you need. Budget wise, are you cut? Put it this way, we, for the budget we get, we do a pretty good job of putting out Okay, so what's the, what's, how much money does, does your office get to do what you need on a yearly or biennium, or how does that, how does that work? Yeah, we get about roughly $40 million and for this particular recreation. And you start setting the scenario. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We can't go to the because you know, there's a lot riding on that $40 million. We're still doing fire. You think about the timber.
timber that comes out, the economy that's dependent, the ONC lands, the fact that they're not getting their timber receipts back, 40 million. You wonder. John, I, but again, not all of No, I get that. I get that. I don't know, but it just seems like we're Is there a breakdown number on the, I mean, that's set aside for timber sales? Yeah, and I don't, I couldn't tell you exactly what that is. Because, you know, I wonder if the food main is supposed to be fine for repairing and access roads and all that standard that's even, and then you wonder, okay, let's invest in our timber. Let's get our guys out there. Let's see what sales we've got. You know, let's, let's be proactive and go out there and let's, let's make sure we have contracts with outside contractors that can do salvage if we need to. Well, you know, again, you know, just meeting all the various laws is where we spend most of our time. We, uh, our last couple of projects, we're actually documenting, we start with all the timber that's in our base that you could harvest on as our base, and then we start looking at all of the environmental or economic issues. Um, you know, we've got a lot of pieces of isolated land where we don't have access, where we got to build a long road or pass it off. Uh, you can't log with a helicopter, um, or there isn't enough there. Start taking all those things off. You know, you're, you're probably down to about ten uh, percent of all the potential. Yeah, this this alternative B is is out of two point four million. Five and a half. That's twenty uh, percent. Well, what I'm telling you is above that twenty percent. It's not feasible to log. There's certainly what we're going to find on the ground is. At any one time, there may not be. Uh, I mean, I think it's a little bit more expert. You know, we find plants, we find nobody you knows. Stay all over all that. So, uh, but you know, when we get, when we've been given the budget, we remember it's been pretty consistent in putting out our timber. You know, it hasn't been all that high, but uh, again, we've been consistent with our budget. John, what department are you in? I'm in Bedford District. Yeah, I, I just, I, just... I'm a field manager. Okay. I, I probably won't call you. I probably would get a hold of Don or Shane, but is there a contact number for you that works? Five four one six one eight two two six zero. That's an office line. Yeah, it's an office line. Okay. And then email maybe uh, what works? It's uh, J Gritz. G E R R I T S at BLM I'm curious, John, is there a bean counter in the BLM to to understand the budget? Is that bringing an, uh, a positive? I'm looking for an ROI. If you've got a million dollar budget, what's the net cost or the net profit each year? And where are we at right now? You know, I know for BLM as a whole, we bring in more money than them. We have about a billion dollar budget. Nationally, and we bring in way more than that. And most of it has to do with oil and gas. Oil and gas, yeah. not timber. Okay. We're, we have in Western Oregon, we are such a small part of the, uh, the public lands that produce timber. When you look at it across the country. Yeah, how many states does the BLM cover? I mean, it's kind of a uh, trick question, I guess. It's not 50. Probably, I don't know. It's not New England. We're in every western state, western, right? yeah. including Alaska, but not Hawaii. So is it, a, is it an oxymoron then between the ONC lands, the fact that 18 counties, they should be getting the timber receipts, and that they're not now because of the, I mean, you kind of hide, not that you, you hide, but behind the ESA, I mean, that's, that's what's 
what's happened, be, because what they did is they took the counties and just kind of kicked them to the curb, and the environmentalists win on that, and I was telling Shane, it's a double-edged, you know, it's, they say stay but go, stay but go, we're done with your industry, I know you're left handling the pieces of that, but... Yeah, and, and you know, I don't think there's, there's, there's not an intentional, certainly, you know, BLM, we don't have, we don't make those kinds of decisions. I know that, I know. So, you know, we, uh, uh, we do what we can do to provide timber, given all the constraints and... And that's why I started out by saying, let's give you every tool you can... Well, okay, so... What tools do you want? Tools that say BLM, you just go lay out a timber sale, don't worry about writing an environmental assessment, you can't get litigated. I mean, that could be a tool. You know, is, is that what you want? I don't know. Um, Why was it fine before and not now? Maybe that's... Well, before or when? Before. Well, I mean... Well, in the heyday of timber harvest, you know, until the owl spotted owl got listed, um, you know, I think... I think we were uh, we were pretty much unconstrained in right. terms of our land base and what we could get off of the land base for timber. And so, since the listing of the owl, it's, you know, that's, that's made a huge difference. I mean, it's not even in, it's not even in a comparison of cutting the funding to the counties. It's not even saying, hey, we're gonna you know, get ready, we're gonna cut 25 percent of your budget. It's not even uh, we're gonna cut half your budget. It's not even that. It's we're cutting all of it. And maybe Congress will do you know Secure Rural Schools Act and give you a few million dollars. I mean, that's the part that it, it, it boils down to humanity. You know, the economic of the human people are here because of timber, and then you take the timber away. It's like, right, but so that's what I was telling Shane. He said he brought Don in, he brought over to you. So that's the shame of it. And I understand that and you know, and that's not a personal thing on you guys. That's part of the politics we can't solve. That has to be congressional uh, or judicial, See, you know, one way or the other. The reason, if you have all the tools and you're doing everything you possibly can do in your every humanely act that you can do, then you go into the congressman and the senator's office and you pound on the desk and say, listen, they have everything they need, but they don't have enough. Why would you take Give them more. Because the communities and the counties are depending, if they're going to manage the ONC lands, of course, then you go one step further, hey, why don't you give us the land back? That's another cover. Yeah, I mean, why are they called ONC lands if the ONC Act is not upheld? I mean, the, the specific language is sustained yield. You're familiar with that, right? Sustained yield, my understanding is 1.2 billion board feet. And that's the organic growth rate of the forest. If we, if we can't get on top of that, those forests are growing. So how are you going to get on top? You can't even achieve half of that right now. What's, go, what's going to happen? Which is why Senator Burchick is saying 500 million board feet, minimum. At least, yeah. yes. Yeah, well, again, you know, if, if we had access to a larger land base and, and uh, less constraints on the land base, you bet. I mean, we have the tools, we have the knowledge. I mean, we can do it. So you could, you could manage a larger land base well, then better than a smaller land base, but no, no. I'm hearing that you don't have all the tools to manage the land base that you have today? No, if, if we had the land base to support a half a billion or a billion more feet, then we would have an organization to get that level of harvest out. I mean, we had that in the 80s, right? No, I, I, well, we well, I think the environmental constraints, right? right? That's it. That's, you don't need more land, see, you need less those, restrictions. Well, yeah, they didn't have those restrictions before, but the environmental has gone like this. Big difference. And so now they're... And that's certainly true. You don't need more land. There's plenty of land out there, isn't there, Craig? Lots of trees. You talk to these guys out here. All they need is a green light, and they'll do it, okay? Right, that's what I'm saying, though, is on our land base, of the two and a half million, if yeah. we had more of that land on which we could put timber sales. The percentage of that, two and a half million? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Two and a half million acres, is that what you're saying? Yeah, because right now, under the Northwest Forest Plan, we have about 22% of that land. Okay. And that, that, so what's a good sustainable percentage then? It should go up from 22 to what? In your opinion? Uh, there's, there's certainly different, different ranges. 
changes within the alternative. Um, and I don't know what the highest level is. But. What's your opinion? You study this, so you have an opinion. I don't have an opinion. Oh, no opinions. <laughs> No, they can't. It's only imagine, you know, what, when you retire, then... Oh, I'll have opinions.